Greetings, physics students. I'm FusionBot to teach you about nuclear fusion and how that's what the sun and all stars run off of. And then we'll solve some problems involving binding energy and mass defect. And then we'll also solve some more problems with fission and fusion that still relate to the mass defect. For the fusion that's happening in, in our sun and in a lot of stars, you are going to have what's called this proton-proton cycle. And let me show you what's going on. There it is. Maybe take a minute, pause it, see if you can at least figure out what every particle on this thing is. Hopefully you were able to figure out that these H1 things, these are protons, they're coming together to make deuterium, this thing's a positron, and this is energy that's given out. And this is happening twice. And then step two here, get your proton, a deuterium sticking together to give you this isotope of helium, a gamma particle, and this larger amount of energy. And this happens twice. And once that happens twice, you can then have helium slamming together with helium. These are isotopes to make the most common isotope of helium. Got a proton left over, another proton, and this massive amount of energy. You don't need to know this in exquisite detail, but a very key thing is that all of these things on the reactant side are more massive. Everything over here is less massive. And so whenever you lose mass, you have a mass defect. And what's that mass defect do? Turns into energy. And you can find out that you get a lot of energy because you have this 0 0.42 times 2 MeV. And you're going to get this 5.49 times 2 MeV. And then you're also going to get this massive 12.86. And that's going to give you the 24.68 for every atom of normal helium that's made. And in fact, you also need to include these positrons are going to combine with something, I assume electrons, and they're going to get 2 times 1.02 MeV. So you add that to your 24.68, and you're going to end up with 26.72 MeV every time that proton-proton cycle happens inside our sun through fusion. Here's a fission problem that I want you to solve using this graph provided below. Pause it, see if you can make good things happen. Now, whenever you have a nuclear problem, almost all, always, you're going to look at your reactants, look at your products, and you're going to compare the masses. And you're going to look for a mass defect. Uh, or you're going to look at binding energies from reactants to products and look for a difference between your reactants and products. So let's see how we would do this in this case. Now if you look at that graph for uranium, you would see that on the graph uranium had 7.6 mega electron volts per nucleon. And krypton had about 8.6 MeV per nucleon, and barium had something like, a little bit lower, 8.3. And you might be thinking, what about for my neutrons? What's their binding energy? Well, that's a crazy idea, because they're just a single nucleon. They're not bound to anything. These guys over here, these guys are all loose. They're not stuck together. So they have zero. So what you do is you look at your reactants. You have nothing coming from this thing. And you have how many nucleons? You have 204 uranium. Sorry, just to make sure you know what's going on. For uranium, 235 nucleons in it. You multiply that by 7.6 MeV per nucleon. Nucleons cancel out and you get 1786 MeV. That's the only thing you have from reactants. 
the products. You've got your Krypton and you've got your barium. Krypton, you've got 92 nucleons. That's coming from this number here. And that's times 8.6. And you combine your product side and you get 1961. And now you look at this and you say, which is bigger, my reactants or my products? Well, it is your products. And so that means that your products, since they are more stable, because they have a higher binding energy. So you take the difference between them, which is like your mass defect or the amount of energy released, and you're going to get a difference of, I'm going to get about 175 mega electron volts, which is my answer. Here's an IB style problem on a uh, nuclear decay that most students would just bypass and try to not do because they're like, oh my god, look at all the numbers and what's you? And, but if you f think about it, it's actually not an incredibly complex problem because at first, it's just asking you to write this decay. So take a minute and pause it and see if you can do that. And they say that you're going to start with plutonium. And they give you all the numbers. There's the mass number. Here's the proton number. And they tell you that it turns in to uranium. So you just got to know where these numbers go. And then they tell you an alpha particle. And that's easy. When you look at the numbers, proton numbers add up, the mass numbers add up, that's it. Now part B, it's a little trickier. You have to do some math, but it's not difficult. Pause it, see if you can do it. The reactants side, the only reactant you have is plutonium. Um, this number here. And then you look at your product side, and you've got two products. You've got the 234 and the 4.026. So let's add these up. And when you do that, you are going to get 238.0378U. And you look at which is bigger. And it turns out that it's this one. It's more massive at the beginning. And that's good, because that means you have a mass defect. And that tells you how much energy you have. So what you do is you subtract this number and this one. Let's do some blue now. And so now you're going to end up with taking a more massive one from your reactants. And you're going to subtract this product number. Zero, three, seven, eight. These are in a unified mass units. And you're going to end up with 0 0.0118U. And now you get to use E equals MC squared. How about that? So you take your mass, or your mass defect, and you use your magical converter, which is in your data booklet. I need 3.0. 931.5 MeV per C squared per U times C squared. And then some awesome canceling stuff happens. C's go away. And you end up with your answer, which is something like 10.991 MeV. This is uh, both your mass defect and the energy released. That's it.